Welcome to my review of Dragon Ball Super episode 47. As the West from the future, a black new enemy appeared. In this episode, the Future Trunks arc begins. This is the best episode of Dragon Ball Super so far. So when we start off in the episode, Future Trunks is running away from this like black shadowy figure in the air. The black shadowy figure is later revealed to be Black Goku. But, but because we don't know if he really is Goku, I'm going to be calling him Black. Most people think he's Black Goku, but there is no confirmation, so I'm going to be calling him Black. So they are attacked by Black. He's attacked by Black, and Black destroyed like an entire city. And we really, we get a shot of it. This is much worse than 17 and 18, or Lapis and Lazuli. This is much worse than what they did. This guy just destroying stuff. Like, he's incredibly powerful. He's destroying stuff. Trunk runs away. He eventually gets to his mother's lab. And we find out that the blue stuff from the preview is fuel from a time machine. So if you guessed it was fuel from a time machine when you saw it last week, congratulations. You, you rolled to get that. Congratulations. You're a damn genius. But no. But the Bulma revealed that there's only enough fuel for a one-way trip into the past. However, because of the fact that uh, during one of the Monaka filler episodes, actually they may not be filler anymore, but during one of those episodes, we saw Bulma was working on pretty much the same machine. So it is very possible that present day Bulma will be the key to getting future Tron back into the future after the arc is over or whenever he needs to go back. But let's continue with the next main thing and the big, really the big thing that happened this episode. So, they, they have a brief conversation about Trump being the only hope they have and how important it is that he goes to the path. Bulma gives him, uh, you know, the, the uh, fuel for the time machine. They head out to leave, but Black attacks. Apparently, he has now learned how to send Trump the key. He attacks, and knowing what, and Bulma, knowing what she has to do, she goes off and gives her life to, you know, distract Black so Trump can get away. And Black? Killed Future Bulma. Future Bulma died. Like, first episode of a new arc, two characters died. Dude, later on, we see my die. I mean, that really blew me away. Because on the, I, I was just watching it, and I was like, did Ma, did Bulma just die? Like, I, but, however, even though it was a really shocking thing that they actually did it, I didn't think they had the balls to do it. The problem I had with it was I didn't feel like it was very well executed. They were kind of like, hey, let's kill her. They killed her, like, instantly. Instead of doing filler last week, they could have ended the arc at, like, episode 45, the filler arc. They could have ended it then. And then they could have done another episode with Future Tron, just maybe without him, before Black Goku showed up. It's an episode dedicated to him hanging out with his mom. Like, a slice of life episode in the Future Tron timeline with him and his mom to build upon the relationship they have to at least make this somewhat more impactful. But I didn't feel any impact behind it. There was not a lot of emotion. There wasn't even really like very sad music playing. It was like something out of Attack on Titan, where you see some like one of the Survey Corps members, I think that's what they're called, just get picked up and eaten. Like it's like no big deal. This is, people die all the time. Get over it. The audience isn't affected to really care. And I didn't really like that. But after seeing Bulma die, Trunks vowed to save the world, and he goes. The Castle Court with the fuel. He meets up with Mai, and we get to see that this world is even worse than we thought. They're just, they're really bad off because they are eating dog food. Yes, apparently Mai brings Trunk food and he gives them food. It's dog food. Mai says it's not dog food. It's actual meat in a can. I'm not sure if it was dog food or not. Some translations are saying it is dog food. And some translations are having my say, Hey, I found something that isn't not dog food. So we get to eat real food for one. But it was just like one can of food. The cat shows up. I do not think it is Dr. Brief's cat, by the way. I don't think that's a cat. I think it's just some random cat. But the cat shows up. Trunk shares some of his meat with it. And then he gets the other food to a uh, Mai. Now, I'll be honest. Good idea for Trunk. If the vibe was surrounded by a woman that looked like that, and she was possibly the only woman left on the planet that I actually knew, I would give her my food too. But also, he's a scion, and that would obviously not be enough food for a scion. So he then, when he's talking to Mai, they're just talking, and he said they need to get to the past now because allies were there, his friends, his Nakama were there, 
And then we get a very interesting thing, which I'm going to talk about and complain about, but I do it every time. I don't like them using Kai footage. I have said it hundreds of times. They don't need to use Kai footage, and I want them to stop using it. Reanimate the scenes in at least digital, crappy digital animation. It can be like the horrible One Piece digital animation with Doflamingo. Yeah, look up One Piece bad animation, and you'll see what I mean. The shot with Doflamingo when his face is like missing eyeballs and stuff. It can be that quality. I wouldn't care. I just want it to at least be digital. Because when they use the Kai stock footage, because it's going from digital to drawn so quickly, in and out, it, it cuts off the flow of the episode and it ruins it for me. So yeah, afterwards I was a little bit like, whoa, what just happened? Like, that was a drastic change in style. And it doesn't, it's not appealing to me. It turns me off. It takes me out of the episode and I don't like that. But besides the Makai stock footage, that was the only thing that really bothered me about the episode. And that's more of a gripe with Super as a whole rather than the episode. But, you know, uh, Trunt and Mai head off to a uh, Capital Corp so they can get in the time machine. While they're on their way there, they are attacked by the mysterious shadow of Black. Uh, so, you know, a pretty, Mai pretty much tells him he's the one that needs to live. He is their only hope. She gets him the fuel. They take out her shotgun, which, if you notice, it's like a, it kind of like the shotgun, the uh, Safuri, the Safurians or the Tuffles used like, in their fight against the science and some of the filler material. And in other words, it seems like it's shooting energy or key instead of, um, you know, it seems like it's shooting like key or energy or energy blast lasers or something, not bullets. So she goes and she attacks Black with it. The gun, of course, does nothing because it's a freaking Black. Black, uh, Black killed Mai. So yeah, he killed Future Bulma and he killed Mai. Mai may still be alive because the voice actor did say she would play a pretty prominent role in this and they've been featured all over the promotional material. And yeah, I mean Future Mai has been, you know, placed on all the promotional material. But who knows, maybe this is just them trying to trick us Maybe Young Mai will play a major role in it. Who knows? But he died, but Mai died, Trunk gets pissed, his mother had died, and let's be honest, him and Mai were probably romantically involved. They were probably in a relationship. So he's very angry. She, uh, she, if she's dead, she died in his arms, and if she's not dead, he thinks she's dead. So he attacked, so he attacked Black. But before he does this half black, we get to see the shadowy figure land on a rooftop. And the figure that was a silhouette was nothing like the actual design that landed. So I do believe Black can shake this. Shake this. But no, he lands on it and it is revealed that he looks just like Goku. He is even voiced by Mosaku Nozawa. So he sounds just like Goku. It's a lot more evil and menacing. It was very good. And his only last word to trust. The last thing we see before the episode ends is him saying, Now's the time for you to die dying. Or die again. So, I don't know what's up with that. Because you are dying would normally not call another member of the race dying. Just like you or me wouldn't go after somebody. Even if I was going to kill somebody, I wouldn't be like, Now's the day you die, human scum. Uh, no, that would be stupid. I'm a human too. So maybe it's not Goku, I'm not really sure. However, neither him or Trunks transform. I'm not quite sure why. And it also seems like Black is still evolving. Because if you look at it, Trunks said Black has learned how to sense my key. Now, that got kind of hint that Black is still learning how to do things. Also, there was a very racist line in this episode where he goes, That damn Black! That damn black bastard black, and I'm just like, I really hope fun of making keep that in there, just so we can have in the English dub the most racist line in Dragon Ball history. I mean, I I was laughing my ass off at that. That was really good. But let's move on to a couple things. You know about the present time those things. I kind of skipped over though, but they're really pretty irrelevant. But let's get to that. We find out. We see all the people. We find out that Goku picking picking lettuce or something. Teaching what goes into study, blah blah blah. So there was a little bit interesting uh, references to the original Dragon Ball where they referenced the training Goku did with the Muten Roshi. Him and Piccolo are like doing the lettuce, they're like you know, doing all the cropping and all the farm work, and then they're calling it training, kind of getting competitive about it. Goku finding out Vegeta training with we. We go over to the planet, the planet, 
Uh, we see Vegeta uh, going Super Saiyan Blue and attacking Wee. Weak comments, Vegeta still stands no chance against him. Goku teleports in, Vegeta hits him in the head. Very funny. You know, uh, Goku offered Beerus lettuce as a gift. Beerus likes the lettuce. We get a scene where I thought they were meditating or something, but no, apparently they were just uh, either just waiting for the 10, uh, the 10 minutes or something for the ramen to be done, which I really like. So they started eating the ramen, and they did mention that the Omni King is not a fighter. They confirmed this, and I have been saying this for months now. The Omni King is not a fighter, he is just incredibly powerful. It is explained that they're asking you to be 18 universes, but one day the Omni King was in a bad mood, so he destroyed us, so he destroyed like six dozen universes. So it's pretty much he's not a fighter. Then science have a bad habit of pick, trying to pick fights with people and determine people's strength. He explained that if the Anya King wanted a universe to be erased, it would just it would just be erased. It wouldn't be a matter of fighting him. It would just happen. The Anya King is like a is, a is a literal god. That pretty much what they say in this episode. He can kind of just undo creation. Like it's not about it's not like about charging up a key blast. He can just destroy it. He can erase it. Like it like. Like, a, like an eraser. He can just make it go away. Bye bye. Was it really nice? So he's not a fighter. Uh, Goku mentioned the multiverse tournament. Uh, and you only want to fight all the strong guys. He wants to be the strongest. We know all that. It is interesting that they're still talking about it. But, you know, that's really all that happened. There wasn't really much else that happened in this episode that was very interesting. However, I do need to talk about the episode preview quickly. The episode preview looks very good. You can clearly see that Trunks is freaked out. I don't know, I guess, did they never mention that there was a future version of Trunks? Did Bulma and Vegeta never mention that? I guess not. He freaked out, and he's standing with Mai. So maybe Trunks showing up in this timeline it will trigger Mai and Trunks to get together in the present timeline. Who knows? Maybe. But young Trunks is, you know, seeing really freaked out. Bulma tempted temp tending to Trunks when he's injured. We also get to see if the time machine still has the word hope written on it. I really liked that. I mean, yeah, there was one other thing I did not enjoy. I feel like we need a new opening song at this point. Because honestly, if you look at the clips and the pictures and visuals of the future Trunks stuff, where it seems all dark and ominous, like the tone is very dark like the rest of this episode, which I would like to point out, this is probably the biggest change of tone we've ever had in all of Dragon Ball. If we went from like lighthearted as hell to like probably the darkest we've ever been, so we're getting the clips that are representing and visual from the dark darkest arc we've probably ever had and then we've had this nice happy go lucky like happy cheerful lighthearted song in the background it just did not fit the tone of the arc so i do feel like we should get new visuals pretty soon new visuals and a new opening song but that is just my opinion if i had to rate this episode i would give it a 10 out of 10. i cannot honestly think of anything that i had a problem with from this episode that was only in this episode Every problem I had with it, I've already addressed it before, and their problem with the Super Series as a whole. So, uh, if I were going to talk about those, I'd be talking about it in, like, a series review. But, so the episode itself, I can't find any of the problems with just the episode alone. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you did, leave a like and comment down below your thoughts on the episode. Above all, God, I hope you had a great day. I hope you had a great day. This is One Day Station, signing out. Peace.